Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome back. When it comes to discharge, there are certain prerequisites that are required. Some people, if you're doing it on a business level, usually that entity would have their employee identification number or their tax identification number on the invoice that they send you. And if they don't, you can cash. That is what discharge is about. Remember, debt is a form of bond, and bond is a form of taxation. In other words, tax is a type of debt. And tax is a type of debt because it's a liability, an exit from the ledger that you owe somebody. Any time someone alleges that you owe them anything, that is debt. Well, tax is the exact same way. The only foundational difference is You've yet to engage in a formal contract with them saying, I agree to this. With any type of loan that you enter into, they, whether conscionably or unconscionably, get you to sign something whereby you now some way expressly or as a form of implication, you agreed to be liable. Now you have to compensate someone for something based on something that you are assumed to have agreed to. Tax, on the other hand, is the assumption that you owe someone, just like a debt, but without you entering into an agreement. Only difference is by way of why it came to life. Why and how it came to life, tax that is, is based on what entity you're using, how you made the money, and how you're using it. It's that simple. Based on those three criteria of the entity you're using, how you made the money, and how the currency is flowing. We'll determine whether someone says, all right, fall under our jurisdiction. Therefore, you owe us something. And there are many ways to which jurisdiction can be obtained or assumed. How you use the money and how you earn it is another word for minimum contact. When it comes to finance. And whether or not there will be minimum contact is predominantly determined by what entity you used the type of entity you use would either create recourse or would exist without recourse would either fall under certain tests and scrutinies that we went over in many videos court test control test so and so and all the other details of enforcing contract and trust law so when you if you're dealing with other types of bills that are not necessarily based on the business account that you've established then they are familiar with it also, although the typical sales representative. The second one that would take a bit more time is ordering the forms itself. If you ever looked at the discharge webinar in the second video that I placed in the website, that was not placed in Patreon, you will see that forms were used. But the question is, how do you update? Now, the main question is, this is year 2024. What if you just learn about this or you just found that you're prepared for the year 2024, but the payoff invoice, which by the way, before any discharge, you would have to, so if the vehicle is 150K and you've been paying some increments and all that's left is 112K, they wouldn't send you that 112K invoice in total, they will just send you the minimum balance as of a regular monthly. Remember, there are many attributes that makes this charge go through or not. It's part of the interest rate of the current economy, and that interest rate will be what you will calculate to determine how much extra amount that you provide to them. Because you always want to give them a little bit more if it's a recurrent service, like water bill and things like that, or phone bill or whatever it is. And even if it's just a, for a vehicle where you already possess the physical property, it's always a, matches the blank of bond series of the year. In the non-UCC video, how to do it properly with the court cases, I explained the office that deals with omnibus and the significance of it. Nonetheless, when it comes to IRS forms, these omnibus blank... The complete video is posted on the Patreon page. Take care. Best of luck.